Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video I'll talk about retargeting animations to any rig. I already talked about Lego renders in Blender, and now I wanted to find a way to easily and naturally animate characters. Of course, what comes to mind are Mixamo animations, but the problem is that we cannot rig a Lego character the way Mixamo would do it. So we need an own rig to which we can transfer Mixamo animations. What I'll talk about today is applicable to any kind of situation, meaning you don't have to have a LEGO model to work with. And with all of that said, let's get started. To retarget animations to any rig, we need three things. First of all, we need a static armature that we want to animate. Then we also need a base, which is an animated armature, from which we want to take the animation data. And to actually retarget the animation, we need the Rococo Studio Live add-on which you can download for free from the link in the video description. Even though the name of the add-on might not suggest it, we get this retargeting toolbox right here, which takes the animated armature as a source and a static armature as the target. Okay, so let's create our target armature. Again, I'm using this Lego character for this tutorial, but you can use any character you like. Having this Lego character just provides us with a bit more of a challenge because we actually have some restriction. You wouldn't be able to rotate the arm like this, so we'll need to use some constraints. To get a base rig, which we can modify, let's press F4 and go to Preferences. And in the Add-ons tab, let's search for Rigify. And once enabled, it allows us to go under Armature and add in a basic human rig. And we of course want to scale it down. So let's do this. Until it's about the size we need. Now I want to change some settings before we actually start modifying the rig. You can see right now it, it is hardly visible. So let's go to the object properties panel, under viewport display and let's choose in front. This way we can see the rig at all times. Now let's go into edit mode and enable x-axis mirror right here. Now everything will be mirrored on the x-axis. Great. You can also see that there are way too many bones for this rig. So let's delete all of the bones we do not need. I am only keeping these few bones because they are all we need. We need a head bone to control the head, a spine bone to control the base of the character, an arm bone to control the arm, a hand bone for the hand and a thigh bone for the leg. Now these bones are rotated on a very specific point and of course this point should be the rotation axis of the corresponding part. So let's place all of these bones correctly. For this we can go into wireframe mode and place these bones. Again with numpad 1 and 3 you can change from front to side view. Great and just like this we have the leg bones positioned correctly. Let's do the same things for all of the other bones. Okay, great, and now I have all of the bones in place. We can already see that if I go into pose mode, every single bone is parented to the spine bone, which is great, but not what we need for the leg bones. So in edit mode, let's select the leg bone and under relations right here, clear the parent. Because we'll actually use constraints to later adjust the bone's position. Now, before we add all of the constraints, let's parent the different parts to our armature. So in the outliner, select everything and then shift select the armature. Now we can choose Ctrl P and parent it with automatic weights. Now if we select the armature and go into pose mode, you can see that we can move our character. But it looks really wrong. So let's quickly fix the vertex groups. We have to do this one by one, so I'll quickly show you how to do this for one part. The hair should be controlled by, by the head bone, which is named spine.006. So let's select the hair and delete every vertex group except the one we need. Now let's go into edit mode, press A to select everything and then assign everything to spine.006. We can do the same thing for the head because this is also controlled by the same bone. Now if I select the head bone and rotate it, you can see that this works fine. We want to do the same thing for all of the other parts of the body. The main part is controlled by only the spine bone, so let's again delete everything else and assign every single vertex to this vertex group. And let's repeat this for the other parts.
Great, and with all of that done, we should now be able to just go into pose mode and now control our character. Okay, now we can add constraints. Why do we need constraints? Well, we can see that this bone should only be controllable on the x-axis. Now again, this should only be controllable on the x-axis. If we would go ahead and animate it by hand, we know this, so we maybe wouldn't need constraints. But the retargeting algorithm doesn't know it, and so we'll need to constrain it in only applying animation to the rotation of the x-axis. So let's start with the head bone. And to add a constraint, we want to go into the Bone Constraint Properties panel and now add an A-Limit Rotation Constraint. Naturally, we want to disable rotation on the X and Y axis, but you can see that this doesn't work out. This model is a bit differently prepared than others, so for the head I need to limit the rotation on the X and Z axis and then change the owner to local space. You might want to fiddle around with this a little bit more to actually understand it. But right now, the head can only be rotated on the z-axis, which is exactly what I want. Now what we also need to constrain is the location, because we can still move the head all over the place. So let's just add in a limit rotation constraint and limit it on all axes. Again, do this in local space. And now the head cannot be moved and can only be rotated on the z-axis. Now the same principle applies to most of the other bones. This bone should only be rotatable on the x-axis, and this one only on the local y-axis. Also, all of these bones should be limited in location change. But some things change when it comes to the spine and the leg bones. I want the spine bone to only be limited in its rotation. So what I want to do is add an A-limit rotation constraint, and limit it on the y-axis, as well as on the z-axis, but with 200 degrees as a max setting. This will allow us to still rotate it on the z-axis, as well as rotate it 200 degrees on the x-axis. Now we need to worry about the leg bones, because these aren't parented anymore to the spine bone. I did this, because again, if I would go ahead and parent these bones, they would rotate with the spine bone, just like this. But this isn't what I want. So let's clear the parent and add the necessary constraints. This is first going to be a limit rotation constraint, limiting it fully on the y and z axis and on the x axis, limiting it so it cannot rotate inside of the body. Now we also want to constrain its location so it cannot be moved anymore. This needs to be done in local space. And now I want to add in a child of constraint, meaning that we can manually parent it to the metaric spine bone but only on all of the location axis and rotation and scale only on the z-axis. Now you can see that this deforms our leg, so we need to click set inverse. Now if I go ahead and rotate the spine bone, you can see that the leg sticks in place as it should do. By the way, if you have any issues with the constraints, just make sure you have the scale applied. Okay, so this is the rig I ended up with. You can see that I only limited rotation and location, on these other bones and everything works as expected. Great, so now we can actually use Mixamo to retarget an animation to the character. So with Mixamo open, let's pick a simple animation. For example, let's go with this animation. What we want to do is go to download, choose FBX and without skin. And now let's download the animation. In Blender, we need to go to file, import, FBX and import the Mixamo animation. You can see that the bones might be rotated a little bit weird. As you can see, in my case, they are rotated outside. But this is okay, it will still work. For now, we can just leave it as it is. And with the Rococo add-on installed, let's select the Mixamo armature as the source and the Metaric as the target. We now need to build a bone list, which will show us which bones the add-on thinks are the same. If there are any bones in your rig that aren't named accordingly, make sure you just go into edit mode, press F12 and rename them. For example, I renamed the head bone to head and then press on rebuild bone list. We can now leave auto scale on, this way we can have the source rig be this big. And now let's click on retarget animation. You will see that the character is being moved out of place, but we can fix this later in the graph editor. For now, let's hide the source rig and play the animation. And you can see that this works quite well on our LEGO character. Now let's quickly fix up the spine rotation and location. We can go into pose mode and select the spine. 
In another window, let's open the graph editor and check the different locations. We can use Alt and A to deselect everything and then double click on, for example, the Y location to move it. You can see that because of the specialty of this character, the Y location actually controls the Z location. So with G and Y, we can move this down to the point where our character stands on the ground. Now we also want to adjust the rotation of the spine and the one we need is the X rotation. So let's again select it and with G and Y move it down until we like it. Great and just like this we have retargeted an animation to a self-made rig. And we can use this technique to animate all kinds of things but again for me I only needed it for naturally animating Lego characters. And yeah that's basically it. This is how we can retarget an animation to any kind of rig. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, consider liking and subscribing and we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.